Thank you. All right. What an honor. Thank you guys for inviting me to be with you. How are you all doing? We're good. We're ready. Are you all going to win big on Tuesday? We are. All right. We're, we're working it. We're standing electorate. We're talking to people that nobody talks to. We're telling them you're needed to show up, vote. We appreciate uh, all the work you've been doing. You're all over. Where'd you, where where were you last? I saw you all over the place. I just, with Ajen, you all know uh, Ajen Pu, who works with the domestic workers, who's done an extraordinary job wow. raising the profile of some of the most exploited and invisible workers in this country. We have done now, I think we're close to 20 virtual um, rallies all over the country and uh, we did a great one last night on raising the minimum wage uh and kamala was on with us uh so we're you know we're working hard i just want to say a word i want to congratulate all of you you know for two reasons not only are you fighting the fight that has to be fought what you know and unfortunately not so many of your colleagues know is that the only way we make change is through grassroots activism. And each and every one of you, you've all rejected corporate PACs. You don't sit around going to rich people's homes. You are out on the street, and I know it's hard to do it now, but you do the best you can and have always. That's what your career is about. And you know, and by the way, maybe I'm knocking on wood here, whatever it is, we are beginning to see the fruits of all of our labor in this election. You are all reading that in Texas, in Georgia, other states, guess what? Young people are starting to come out in big numbers. And you know why? It's because of the work you guys and other progressives have done. We have spoken to young people and working class people in a way that establishment politics, politicians often do not. And they understand and they respond. So we have made progress in a whole lot of ways. I just want to congratulate you. I know, and let me say this personally, each and every one of you, has been under a special ugly pressure from the President of the United States in ways that are beyond belief. Totally disgusting. Racist, outrageous behavior from the President of the United States. So I thank you for responding with class and with dignity and showing the world what an idiot he is. And I, and I, thank, <laughs> you. And I thank you for doing it. It's not easy. I was with uh, Ilhan. Now, I'll never forget this. Uh, we were having... Uh, dinner at a Chinese restaurant in D.C. You remember that, Ilhan? I do. And here she is, a freshman member of the United States Congress, doing a job, and suddenly she's getting attacked in a vicious way by the President of the United States. You know? And I asked her how she was responding, how she was feeling. She says, nothing new. That's what I've had to deal with my whole life. And that's the truth, I think, for all of you. So I just want to thank you for the dignity that you have shown. I cannot think of a group of people, and I say this absolutely sincerely, a group of people, all four of you, who have had more of an impact on the political prog uh, uh, political situation in this country than you guys have. You really have. You have helped transform America. That is no small thing. So thank you so much for what you've done. Well, Senator, thank you. I know um, I, I said that to you because I know that you know all of us are are used to and have experience people who are threatened by our, um, attacks by people who are threatened by our presence in rooms. Um, and so it's, it's no surprise, right, that the, the president um, and, and the Republicans have made us the target. But I know that you have also been the target of the status quo uh, and the, the establishment. Um, and you know, we, we have had a conversation amongst us about what is possible um, after November 4th. Uh, and what's what's giving you what's giving you hope? What's making you feel energized to continue the fight? Look, and I think each of you have said the same thing in in different ways. Our first fight is to defeat Trump, and that has to that has to happen. And I know all of us are working very hard to make that happen. But we understand that electing Biden is not the end all; it is the beginning. Okay. And I think as the result of the work that all of you have done, Biden's proposals in this campaign are a lot stronger than they were in the primary. Alexandria uh, was on the uh, climate change task force, did a great job. 
uh, and his proposals are stronger. Do they go as far as we would want? No, they don't. Okay. Biden, unlike Trump, does not conceive of himself as a dictator. That means you have your job in the House. I've got my job with others in the Senate. And we're not giving up on our agenda. For example, one area, you know, Biden wants to expand health care. That's good. Wants to lower prescription drug costs. That's great. Wants the double funding for community health centers. Very important. But you know and I know that at the end of the day, the only way that we're going to provide quality care to every man, woman, and child in an affordable way is through Medicare for all. And we ain't giving up on that struggle. All right? We're going to introduce Medicare for all. Believe me, we are. And we have, because of all of your efforts and the efforts of great doctors and nurses and others throughout the country, we got a majority of the people who support us. So thank you for that. Green New Deal, we ain't giving up on that. We know, my God, I mean, every day, I mean, the horrors that are going on on the West Coast right now, all over the world, Australia burning, West Coast burning. We have got to be bolder than ever before in tackling climate change. And as Alexandria and all of you have pointed out, we can create millions of good paying jobs as we do it. We're going to go forward on that issue, on criminal justice, on immigration. All right, we're not retreating. So our first task, we made it clear to everybody, it's no great secret. Our first task, we got to defeat the worst president in the modern history of this country. And number two, we organize our people to make sure that Biden becomes the most progressive president since FDR. That's that's what I'm envisaging. That's right. And, and, and yeah. Senator, you know, because you left the, the, that culture shift of, you know, not me, us, what you're talking about is what uh, the poet just really poured into us. Is that reminder that the power of the people is greater than the people in power. It's that old adage that, you know, change does not come from Congress. It comes to Congress. And that's not to give short shrift to the power of our seats, but it's just the reality. You know, ultimately, systemic transformative change has zero to do with the conviction of the people in these seats and everything to do with the courage of the people, of everyday people in this movement. Mm -hmm. And you have empowered so many with that. And so, you know, we thank you. And it's we're th thank you for coming to this virtual table. You know, as I said, we've all been heavy in these Zoom streets right now, doing everything we can to make sure that people understand, you know, clearly what is at stake and what is the most consequential election, not just in our lifetime, but in history. So thank yeah. you for being here. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and the other thing too, Bernie, is that like we and and I and, and all of us, you know, we really thank you for normalizing. And this is and this is what this is what I've been telling our community and like how we're going to achieve our agenda moving forward, normalizing, bringing the ruckus on the Democratic Party, because that was not seen as okay for a very long time. It was seen as extremely taboo for a very long time. And um, and it would result in so many people being ostracized and targeted, which, you know, you you built your, your whole career enduring that. Um, and now that that's been normalized, like every single one of us got our seats challenging the democratic establishment in one way or another. You know, we weren't the favored, you know, D-trip candidate or we challenged incumbents or whatever that may be. And now from a grassroots perspective, people are realizing that, oh, we can hold our party accountable and put the fire on our party, on our own party. It doesn't have to just be Republicans. And in that way, we prevent the rightward drift of the Democratic Party and people are it's really completely reset the idea of one's relationship with the party that they vote for. And um, that would not have happened without you in 2016 again this year, you know, and and with so many other progressives as well and the work that they've been putting in. And um, and I think it's really completely reset people's political imagination of not only what we can achieve, but how we achieve it. It's a very freeing thing. 
Mm-hmm. Oh. And you know, I'm Bernie. I just also hope personally and that you feel less alone, that you you have a squad, you have a crew of us that are standing with you about speaking the truth. Um, uh, I just want you to know, I know we have the movement work and you've worked with that, but I hope you feel less alone in that you have folks that understand what you are trying to tell folks is that, you know, this is your, supposed to be your party. This is supposed to be your government. That government is supposed to be about you, not those that have the wealthy, the corporation. So just know, uh, you have, uh, you know, I don't want to age you, you have your sisters, uh, that will continue to push back. We appreciate your leadership in the Senate. Uh, and thank you for believing in the possibility of people like us running for office and winning and and not being intimidated by us really unbelievably strong, beautiful, loud, unapologetic women. Uh, you know, it's really hard for people to be in space with us. Uh, and, and we, we, you don't you know, you stay, Machine. I don't stay. I, I screw him. He seems all like, cool about it. Like, he's all right. Like, yeah, this is like, like you know, family or something. So it I is family. <laughs> Rashida, I have said this before and I say it again. You know, somebody looking and say, hey, it's an old Jewish white guy. What does he have in common with these young people? Women of color. What, what? And the answer is, I have more in common with you than the overwhelming majority of my colleagues. Why is that? Because we come from the same place. We talk. We understand each other. We all come from similar, in, different, but we all come from working class backgrounds. We know what it's like to struggle out there. So... You're right. You make me feel less alone. It's true. And I love each of you. I really do. You guys are extraordinary in each in your own way. And uh, just thank you so much for what you're doing. And we're going to we go forward you, together. Yes. yes. After the election, we're going to squat up and continue to fight the, every injustice out there. Thank you so much for being with us. And, okay, and I love you, the fact that Rashida let you get a word or two in tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't even start. Don't even talk. This is so important because I think that forever there was this the movement. You guys want to mute? We don't echo. There was this the the movement versus elected officials. The truth is there is an inside outside, but if you're getting it right, it's all one movement. Right. And so when we say that we're in solidarity. We're in the battle. We're not on the battlefield. We're in the battle. And that is the culture shift that has happened. And you're right. ushering that in. So thank you, Senator. Okay. Thank you, guys.